So there's a lot that we can talk about when it comes to the Vancouver Canucks. And we discussed some of these ideas yesterday. We asked the question, hey, what now? The Canucks are pretty much a playoff team, but where do they go from here? And we had some pretty good discussion in the comments section underneath. So I'm very appreciative with the engagement of that. Thank you very much. But in today's video, before the Canucks go out there and play off against the Montreal Canadiens, which will, by the way, be the final game of the year against an Eastern Conference opponent, I wanted to talk about one of the biggest names on the team right now that has unfortunately not been showing off. Why? Because when it comes to Elias Lindholm... The past few videos we've made about him have all been pretty negative. We'd said that, oh yeah, he may not want to resign, he wants a big contract, he wants more than he's worth, etc., etc. But when it comes to Lindholm and the way that he has played as a member of the Vancouver Canucks, it turns out that not only is everybody else saying that he needs to be better, but it turns out he's saying that about himself too. So, let's get into the scoop here. Elias Lindholm, 29 years old, right-handed center. We all know the deal here. He signed on till the end of this season, making $4.85 million a year against the Vancouver Canucks cap. And two years ago, he was a point-per-game player. He played on a line with... Johnny Gaudreau, he played with Matthew Kachuk, he was very good, 42 goals, 40 assists. Last season, even, 64 points playing with Jonathan Huberdeau. This season, though, he had 32 points in 49 games played, before getting traded over to Vancouver, where now he's got 7 points in only 20. 4 goals, 3 assists, he had 2 goals in the first game, I'm pretty sure, and that was about it when it came to offensive production from Lindy Lindholm. And even as far back as like a week ago, there were already people talking about this on Sportsnet. On 650, they were doing entire segments about Lindholm as to why he wasn't really playing all too well, why he wasn't getting offense. I think there was a bit by Ian McIntyre. I think it was McIntyre. Might have been somebody else. But essentially, they were talking about how Elias Lindholm, upon his arrival to Vancouver had been snake-bitten offensively, and how he didn't really get any of the points to go through, and as a result, he's kind of been more determined to make himself more valuable as a defensive center. Because, hey, if he's not getting any offense, the worst he could do was not provide any defense either. So that's why he's been a lot more focused on being the first man back, being able to intercept passes, deflect plays around from the defensive zone, etc., etc., but while it's good that he's being able to provide that, at the end of the day, he does need to do some offensive things as well. So maybe if that's him going in for a pinch to make a play in the offensive zone, or him being a little bit more aggressive, not waiting for the opposition to come to him, maybe there are some changes that need to be done there. But, of course, that was an idea tossed around on 650 a week ago. Lindholm, since then, he has only one point in his last 10 games. He's a minus two in that span as well. And realistically, I mean, the $8 million price tag that everybody says might exist really doesn't look at all like something that would be worth it for the services that Lindholm provides. And we had ourselves, furthermore, this article from Daniel Wagner from earlier today, wherein Elias Lindholm himself acknowledges his own shortcomings. I'll leave a link in the description to this article, Canucks Lindholm demands more from himself to bust scoring slump. Rick Tockett suggested that Lindholm isn't fully healthy as he struggles with a lengthy goal drought. Now, when it comes to what... Tockett ended up saying about Elias Lindholm, he's a little banged up too, to be honest with you, so he's playing through a little thing here and there. It's nothing major, though. So, right off the hop, we're hearing something from Rick Tockett that Elias Lindholm may have been a little bit banged up these past few games. Whether or not that's really apparent in the way that he's playing, that remains to be seen. I mean, you could let me know your thoughts in the comments as to whether or not you feel... It's like, oh, he's injured, everything makes sense now. Yeah, that's why he was doing this. We don't really know, honestly. Like, I can't pinpoint a specific instance in Lynn Holmes' past week's worth of play or whatever where I'm like, oh yeah, he looks like a guy who's not fully healthy. He just looks normal, in my opinion. He's just not really producing. But either way... This article, Wagner goes out there and does a pretty good job at describing what it is that Lindholm has done. He scored a bunch of goals against Carolina, and then he's not really been producing all too much ever since then. He has a grand total of four goals and three assists in 19 games since the Canucks acquired him, including just one point in his last 12 games. To put it bluntly, that's just not good enough. And then you go out into the comments and read what Lindholm says about himself. 
We talk a little bit, but I mean, mostly it's from myself. I don't know if I'm even averaging a shot on net since I came here. You want to be closer to three. It's tough to score goals if you don't shoot the puck. Until I start shooting more, it'll be tough, but I feel like my game overall is going in the right direction, so now it's just to maintain that and keep getting better each and every day. The article also says that while Lindholm didn't get any shots on goal against Buffalo, he did have four shot attempts and he created several dangerous chances for his line mates, Elia Mikheyev and Sam Lafferty. By the end of the game, the line had 16 to 6 advantage in shot attempts when they were on the ice together at 5v5, while high danger chances were 5 to 1. So at the very least, there was a good amount of offense getting created from that Lindholm line. It's just, you know, they didn't really convert. The only goals scored in that Buffalo Sabres game were Elias Pettersson and Connor Garland, so not really the Mikheyev, Lafferty, and Lindholm line. But at the same time, getting more shots on goal is always a plus, and for a guy who is primarily noted as a former 40-goal scorer, I mean, yeah, you kind of have to shoot. I'm sorry, buddy, that's just how it goes. If you go over to Elias Lindholm and his game log, see where a bunch of these shooting opportunities are coming from, he hasn't had a shot in three games. The last time he had a shot on goal was against Colorado. He had two. Then if you go before then, he had shot streaks from Winnipeg, Vegas, Anaheim, Pittsburgh, LA. I mean, he had five shots against the Bruins and four shots against the Red Wings where he'd scored two goals, so he can shoot, it's just... I don't even know if he's averaging a shot per game since getting traded over to Vancouver. It's kind of weird there. Who knows where that's coming from as well. Because he's playing in a center position with guys like Mikheyev and Lafferty, both of whom can pretty much speed by with the puck, is Lindholm's onus more so to set these guys up rather than to take his own opportunities and put himself in proper scoring positions. Unfortunately, I wouldn't say that Lafferty and Mikheyev are like the best playmakers, so it's tough to kind of do give and go plays and put yourselves in open spots when you're Elias Lindholm playing with those guys. It was easier when he was playing with Elias Pettersson, but still, as we remember, the Pettersson and Lindholm duo really didn't work all too well together, no matter who was at center or who was at wing. Going back over onto Wagner's piece, the article has some extra comments from Rick Tockett. With veteran guys like Lindholm, he is an 800-game guy. It's the little things. He knows how to play the game, he knows how to play without the puck. Obviously, his face-offs are great. I don't think you have to go through a whole X's and O's with Lindholm. It's more the subtleties. Sometimes you tip off before you shoot. We're finding you're tipping off your shot where maybe before there was a little bit more deception to your game. It's no different than Hughes, no different from Millsy or Pedersen. Good players need a little bit. It's not like we sit them down and have to go, okay, we've got to rework your game. It's just the subtleties of the game that you try to help with. And the final comment that I wanted to go over here talks about Lindholm. He says himself, In all pro sports, if you have confidence, you're a good player, and when you're not confident, you're going through a tough time. You've just got to remind yourself that I'm a really good player. It just hasn't worked out so far. A couple of years ago, I scored 42 goals. I know I can do it, but you've just got to remind yourself that you can still put the puck at the back of the net. So, with all the extra conversation and analysis done, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go ahead and read the Daniel Wagner article. It's a very good one. But... At this point, I kind of feel a little bit bad for Elias Lindholm. This was talked about in the subreddit too, but it kind of feels like the guy's pretty hard on himself. Not even saying that like, oh, it's a bad thing to hold yourself to a higher standard or to be accountable for your actions, but I don't know, it just kind of feels like the guy knows that he can be better, and he's pretty disappointed in himself that he isn't. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below when it comes to Elias Lindholm. Do you think that this change of shooting dynamics will come to fruition soon? If it's not now, against Montreal later tonight, when will it be? And if Elias Lindholm does not continue producing, if he does not bolster up his offensive productivity, then where exactly is his role going to be for the Vancouver Canucks in the playoffs? And do you still think that the Lindholm for Kuzmenko trade was as much of a beneficial move for Vancouver as the majority of the fan base seems to think it was back when the trade was made. I get it, you know, there's still some value to be had by freeing up the money for Andre Kuzmenko, but thinking about the prospects, thinking about the draft pick, thinking about what Lindholm was, and if the Canucks are not able to re-sign him, which probably is going to be the case if he's asking for $8 million, where exactly does your mind go when thinking about the trade now? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Elias Lindholm. We'll make another video talking about the Canucks and the Canadians post-game by the time that concludes. I hope you enjoyed this. Vrishash Rolls 99. And bye. <laughs>